used to the wonderful world of machine learning, and I built my first AI application. It was a very simple project, and it was a chatbot. It would simply interact with me, and sometimes it would also solve some, some simple problems that I put to it. But when I was in 10th standard, I came across an incident that would completely change the way I look at people and machines. I, one day, I was walking home from school, and I witnessed the accident of a visually impaired person. And this prompted me to look into the lives of the visually impaired. A lot of these visually impaired people use primitive technology like walking sticks to move around and navigate the surroundings. So why not use computers to change their lives? Why not use something that I learned to, and implement it and use machine learning to help guide the visually impaired? So I hopped onto my computer and tried to build an application that would help guide the visually impaired. The device consisted of a camera and a mic and an earphone. The camera would scan the environment and look for any dangers like potholes or the traffic lights or even crossroads and, tell, and notify the user about this. When, when I was in 10th standard, uh, a lot of my viewers felt programming a bit difficult. So I wanted to change that too. So I authored a C++ book with completely different structures and not like a regular textbook that uses examples and definitions and other things. I believe computers have the potential to change lives. There's a very interesting technology that is moving right now called the deep learning technology. Right now, millions of devices use deep learning. In fact, the very application that I use to come to this TEDx event uses deep learning to navigate and find the fastest route. <coughs> so why not use deep learning to solve other problems that are more particular? Uh, so what is deep learning? So deep learning is modeled behind the hu how the human, my, human brain works. It is based on the principles of the workings of the human brain. Although, it, although deep learning has immense potential to impact a wide variety of fields, I believe its biggest impact would be in the field of healthcare. And why do I say this? It's because of the sheer volume of data healthcare industry produces alone. Nearly 153 billion gigabytes of data were produced by the healthcare industry in 2013 alone. And at this astronomical rate of 48% growth annually, by tw in 2020, we would have nearly 23, 14 billion gigabytes of data. And so what can we do with this data? We can learn from it. We can make machines understand and probably even decipher something that the human mind couldn't. Computers are really efficient at finding patterns. So why not use computers to scan the healthcare data and probably even find some pattern involved in symptoms and problem medical diagnosis as well? Also, more data, we have better accuracy of finding the pattern relying on the data set. As we all know, diseases like AIDS, cancer, malaria are fatal if not diagnosed early. So what do all these diseases have in common? The answer is they have a common ground, that is blood. Most people don't even visit a doctor in a country like India. And they don't even visit a doctor, even after symptoms become extreme. They, they, do, they don't go for regular checkups that could have intimated them of any future diet, future diseases. Near two, 219 million cases were in 2017 of malarial diagnosis. And that is 219 followed by six zeros number of patients. That's huge. A lot of these patients didn't even go to doctor or receive treatment. Nearly 36.9 million people in 2017 live with HIV. A lot of these patients, although significant number of patients receive treatment, a lot of these didn't even know they were suffering from an HIV infection. Another big player is cancer, of course. Cancer resulted in 9.6 million deaths in 2018 alone. So what can we do with these deadly diseases? How do we eradicate them? To put that in perspective, one in six deaths is due to cancer. A lot of these diseases have another problem. The problem is how they appear in the human body. A normal person who is actually sick could have no symptoms in the initial stage. 
So a time period is left, a time delay basically is left. And if, if, the, if the treatment would have been given at the early stage, they could have survived. So why not use computers to help in blood, blood diagnosis and also blood statistics? In a, in a country like ours, where access to healthcare is limited, it's also expensive, most people don't even go for regular <laughs> checkups. And also, it is a pretty big, time-consuming work to go to a hospital, to, and also expensive for checking regularly. So is there any non-invasive way to help in diagnosing and test statistics? Turns out the answer lies in the machines. Why not use machines for this task? The project that I innovated called Project Loom uses deep learning technology to, to create detailed statistical analysis of the blood. It provides white blood cells counts, red blood cells count, and also detects abnormal cells. It also provides valuable feedback based on past reports. With, it also has an accuracy of greater than 95%. It is also affordable and, and could be done at the comfort of your home. All the user has to do is use a lancet, prick his finger, place a drop of blood on something that I call a slider, that is nothing but a fancy word for something that contains the necessary stains and fluids that, that, that is placed on blood, which is then placed into a device which will scan the blood and also send the detailed analysis of the blood directly to your smartphone. This is done at home, at the convenience of his or her time at a home. For example, high WBC count could mean an infection, right? But let's take a scenario, for example. Let's say there's a person, and he is infected, but is not showing symptoms yet. So he regularly uses this application and checks his blood for any uh, markings or something. And he notices there's a high WBC count as compared to the previous test done. So he can seek medical attention at a, at a high rate and also understand what is the underlying disease and also go to doctors, doctor and understand and also create more tests so that he could get to know what he's suffering from and possibly save his life. It also reduces the error rate and the deduction time in the disease. My aim is to provide affordable healthcare all over the world. My aim is to provide more affordable, more quality access to healthcare. In a society like ours, but affordable health care is difficult to obtain. A lot of these people don't even understand what they're suffering from. So why not use machines to help people? I believe machine is the future of health care and probably with machines we could help improve our society as well. And with common growth, we could have better developments all over the world. Thank you.